Hey guys, it's Sarah here. In this video, I wanna go over asthma step-up therapy. Now, before I get started, I just wanna mention a few stuff. Number one is inhaler technique. Now, you have to realize that these medications are given via inhalers, right? So that medication has to reach the lungs. This is not like you put it in your mouth and it goes down. It has to reach your lungs. So if the technique is not done right, it's not gonna reach your lungs, and then you are gonna be stepping them up on the therapy because they're telling you it's not working, they're having shortness of breath, et cetera, but it's not that the medication's not working, it's just that they're not taking it properly. So it's not reaching where it has to, and you're gonna step them up inappropriately. So for that reason, you should have an, the patient show you how to take the inhaler to make sure that it's done right. So that's really, really, really important before you're stepping people up. The next thing I wanna say is that the goal of the treatment is to control their symptoms and to reduce exacerbations. Now, it's great that we have these medications to help control their symptoms, but we also wanna help them not get into the scenario that they need to control their symptoms. So for that reason, it's really important to know their triggers so they could try to avoid it. Not everything could be avoided, but some things can. Some common triggers are pollen, mold, pets, smoking, fumes, stuff like that. So if they could avoid it, that would be great. So we don't even need these medications in the first place. Another point about the medications is that while we're stepping them up as needed, our goal is to be able to step them down afterwards. So if they're stable on it for like three to six months and they're fine, we should try to step them down as needed as well so that they don't have side effects. Lastly, in terms of monitoring their pulmonary function, well, for them, you want them to be able to take control of their own asthma, so like have an asthma action plan for them, etc. But but from your point of view, monitoring their pulmonary function, you could do spirometry. It's usually done yearly, um, age five and up. And what that does is that it measures FEV1 and FEVC and basically telling you how much air flow limitation there is. That being said, we're gonna go on to the asthma step up therapy. These are based on the GINA guideline. Everything's written over here and you can get the PDF down below. I also have a respiratory um, sheet with each of the pictures of the inhaler so you can see which one is which and what you know the side effects are, et cetera. You could get in, in the link below. But I just wanna say that here, I'm not gonna be going through the alternatives therapy, I'm just gonna be going through the preferred therapy. So that being said, let's get started. So step one is mild. They have less than two symptoms per week and it's pretty much controlled. And they have no risk for exacerbation. Now, risk for exacerbation, I just wanna mention because we're gonna mention that a lot. So risk for exacerbations could be like obesity, food intolerance, they were intubated in the past um, or an ICU in the past for asthma. They smoke, they're exposed to the allergens, stuff like that, that would um, increase their risk. So that's what we mean by risk for exacerbation. Now, step one, the preferred therapy for someone who has symptoms under two times a week and has a low risk for exacerbation would be low dose ICS for Motorol as needed. So that's pretty easy, right? Then we go to step two, which is basically either they have a high risk or they fail step one, right? Because it's like a ladder, we're stepping them up. So step two, you could either keep, it's either the same thing, the low dose ICS for motoral as needed, but the differences between step one and step two is that here we introduce the low dose ICS daily and a, and a rescue inhaler. And then if they fail that, they're up to step three. Now step three, so we're still doing the low, do, uh, the low dose ICS for motoral, but the difference is, is that we're doing it maintain, a maintenance. And again, we need our rescue inhaler, but it's maintenance, right? As opposed to before, it was as needed. Then we go on to step four. Step four, we still, we failed step three, we're up to step four. Step four, the difference is, is that we're not having a low dose ICS for Motorola, we're having a medium dose ICS for Motorola. Maintenance again, and we need a reliever. Step five, we failed step four, we're up to step five. This is severe, and this is people who are refractory to the other four steps. Now, th these patients are generally gonna get put on a triple therapy, like Trilogy, for instance. But here we also introduce other stuff, like biologics. Basically, in a nutshell, to, to show you what the difference is between each step. Like I said, I'm not going through the alternative because I don't want to confuse anyone, but your basic preferred therapy for each step. We have step one, that is the low dose ICS for motoral as needed. Step two, they failed step one, right? That is, same thing or it's adding on the option to add on ics daily and of course we need a reliever step three is 
taking that low dose ICS for motorol that we had in the past two steps, but instead of doing it as needed, now it's gonna be done on a maintenance. Step four, we, stay, we fail step three, we go to our medium dose ICS for motorol. So instead of the low dose that we had in the last three steps, this is a medium dose and it's required. Then the next one is step five. Step five, instead of a combination, we add on a triple therapy like Trilogy. Step five, we also introduce other stuff because we failed everything else. So we introduce biologic, some other stuff. So I hope this is helpful. Please feel free to ask questions and enjoy.